So this week, the International Criminal Court decided that it has jurisdiction to investigate Israel and the terror group Hamas for alleged war crimes. Now, the move was denounced by a number of countries, including Israel, Germany, Hungary, and also Canada. Now, Foreign Minister Mark Garneau issued a statement which basically said that Canada supports the work of the ICC generally and that it's firmly committed to a two-state solution, but because Palestine is not a state, it can't join any of these international treaties or international bodies, and so it actually can't support this move because Palestine is not a state. And if it were a state, that would be a different story, but it's not, and so this is the wrong move at this particular time. Now. I wanted to make this video because I think it's important to explain what is going on in the Middle East and why Canada made the right decision and what's up with Palestine not being a state. Where did that come from? I thought Palestine was a state that got taken over by Israel or, you know, something to that effect. Now, I'm going to go into a bit of history and it's one of those rare opportunities where we can do that and it's super relevant, but I don't want to stray too far. So I'm just going to start in about 1916 and this is during the collapse of the Ottoman Empire. Now, what happened at that time is that the British and the French came to an agreement that became known as the Sykes-Picot Agreement after the foreign minister, so Sykes and Picot, the Sykes-Picot Agreement, where they basically divided up the Middle East into areas of influence or areas of control. Now, you may have heard something about the British promising to create a Jewish national homeland, and some of this division included that promise, and this was sort of finalized in the 1920 San Remo Conference. Now, you can see here from the map that the areas from the Sykes-Picot eventually evolved into what would be known as mandates. Now, these mandates were basically areas that the British or the French would control and steward eventually until these places became ready to self-govern. So they would help build the institutions, help the population along. Again, remember, this was part of the Ottoman Empire, so they, you know, they did not have these democratic institutions. Perhaps they maybe had no courts or, or centralized government because the, the Ottoman Empire collapsed and perhaps regional governments were, were not set up. And so they basically created all these new entities. Now, at some point, the part of this map that is Jordan was chopped off and the eventual British mandate for Palestine encompasses what we today know as Israel and the Palestinian territories. So that would be Gaza and the West Bank. And so this map you're looking at right now, this is the original partition plan for dividing up the state. So up until this point, we do not have an independent, independent Palestine as a state because it was either part of the Ottoman Empire or a mandate controlled by the British so that they would prepare it to become a state. Now, 1947, this is the opportunity to become a state. This is where the UN proposes a division of the land, a partition plan, because there's a lot of conflict and strife between the Jews and the Arabs who live there. Now, you can see the blue is the Jewish section, the Jewish state, again, unnamed at this particular point, and the uh, yellowy orange is going to be the Arab state, again, unnamed at this particular point in 1947. Now, what happens is that the Jewish delegation, the Jewish representatives accept this partition plan, but the Arab representatives do not. And so you have then the Israeli War of Independence, so the 1948 war, and that war results in a lot of refugees being created. Now, little known fact, a lot of people are familiar with Palestinian refugees, but very few are familiar with Jewish refugees from Arab lands and from Arabized lands in the Middle East. So basically what happens is the state of Israel is declared and they're starts a war to now see what the borders are going to be following the failure of the partition plan. Arab and Muslim governments in the Middle East basically eject or force out a number of their Jewish subjects, pretty much, uh, you know, if you look at today at Jewish populations in the Middle East, they went sometimes from hundreds of thousands to, you know, zero or, or one. And so these people are all going to move to this new um, Jewish state, which, which became Israel. And some of the Palestinians who lived in the Jewish areas or what came to be Jewish controlled areas eventually moved out. Now, there were two wars. There was one in 1948 and then one in 1967. So the 48 war created a number of refugees from the Middle East generally. So that would be Jews being evicted from countries in the Middle East and it would be Jews being evicted from their homes in the West Bank, and it would be Palestinians evicted from their homes in what would eventually become uh, the sort of 1967 Israel, or as some people refer to it, Israel proper, or, you know, the Green Line Israel. So this created a number of refugees, and this led to the refugee problem. Fast forward to 1967, and whatever is left of the West Bank, which was then controlled by Jordan, and that is why it was called the West Bank, because it's the West Bank, the Jordan River, from the country of Jordan, it's west of Jordan. And so, fast forward there, Israel gains control of that and the Gaza Strip, creating more refugees, so now you have sort of a double refugee problem, you have refugees from the original, refugees from 67, so you have an additional refugee problem, and 
that is what the Israel-Palestine conflict and the refugee issue is often what you hear about. That is what the government of Canada is referring to, a resolution of the two states. Now, again, it's a little bit confusing because there was no official state of Palestine. All you have is sort of armistice lines or peace lines. Uh, and it's also a little bit confusing because there are Jewish refugees, not only from the Middle East as, as a whole, which is why I believe that you can't say the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. You have to talk about the Israeli-Arab conflict because it, it's a much larger conflict. Um, but there are also Jewish refugees from the West Bank. So places in Jerusalem where Jews were actually evicted from the old city, uh, places surrounding Jerusalem where they were, you know, ejected because, again, the refugees were moving east and west, both Arabs and Jews. And so it's a very, very messy story. But in, in a nutshell, I think that encompasses up till, uh, you know, at the very least until this, the 70s, uh, where things things calmed down. At least until the 70s, uh, before the the 73 war, the Yom Kippur war, or the October war, as some people call it, um, that pretty much uh, involved going back to this 1967 line after all the peace treaties with with uh, with Egypt and you know everything was given back. So, long story short, that is a bit of the brief history. But I think Canada did the right thing. I think we made the right decision because at this particular point in time, Palestine is not a state as such. Now, you know, will it become one? What what does that look like? Again, maybe that's a topic for another video, and there's, you know, it, this entire thing is jam-packed, a lot of history. I'm really trying to cram it in, and this video is already going a little longer than I wanted. But hopefully that covers just a, a bit of the issue for you, and why I think Canada made the right move, and why Palestine is not a state until this particular time. So, for True North, I am Sam Ashkenazi. Thank you so much for watching, and have yourselves a great day.